A Tuesday night in the American. We welcome you into a chilly Wichita, Kansas here in the new year of 2018. The Mustangs of SMU are in town to square off against a Red Hot Shockers program for Wichita State. Wichita State picking up their first home win in conference play and their first road win in conference play in the last two outings while the Mustangs coming off a victory on Saturday right here on ADN back in Dallas against ECU. Hi everyone, Lincoln Rose along with Coach Angela Beck. We had a chance to see Travis Mays' squad get back on track. We'll see if that can continue here on the road as they head north into some chilly conditions up here. Single digits in Wichita against a Shockers squad. Keith Adams looks like she has her program right where she wants it. Well, her last road loss, she talked to her team and said, we lack energy and we also, we, we lack urgency. So now their, their new motto is let's go get it. And that's what they did. They went and got a couple wins. Travis Mays, 0-7 on the road. It's a little bit of an Achilles heel. They need to get one here tonight. Take a look at Coach's keys to the games. First up for the visitors from Dallas. Well, they, obviously the Mustangs got to hit their cribs. Their bigs have been missing some cribs. Take a little more time inside, and then they got to get some more kids to, to score. More role players have to, you know, help Adams out. And across the way, how do the Shockers win their third straight game? Well, just kind of like they've been doing it. They've been rebounding and, and hitting the glass, and they've got to keep SMU off the offensive glass because they've been tremendous. And then mixing up their defenses. Their defenses have been a lot stronger here in the last couple games. Tonight's game will feature two of the top scorers in the American this year, but I know when you talk about SMU, you want to talk about the one who creates some second chance opportunities in Deja Thomas. Well, she was unbelievable in her last performance against ECU. Uh, tremendous effort on the offensive glass and the defensive glass. She had her career high in points and then 22 rebounds. Also happened to drop four dimes along the way. It was a career high night all the way around and you talk about impressive scores, almost 19 points and outing overall this year for Rangie Bassard. Well, one of the reasons they won their last couple games is because of Rangie Bassard. She is a tough presence in the inside. She can shoot that little uh, elbow jumper, but she, she's gonna take it, she's gonna rebound it. She's averaging 20 points and nine rebounds in the American, so she's she's a force. Shockers looking to put on a show for those who make the trip out to the roundhouse. Shockers and Mustangs when we return on ADM. I was the last person anybody's thinking is gonna be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically, the goal is to let kids be kids while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities, and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate. With one unifying purpose, to shock the world. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in twenty-one different sports at thirteen esteemed institutions across eleven states. Three hundred sixty thousand students and two point six million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Welcome back. Moments away from opening tip between the Shockers and the Mustangs. Lincoln Rose, Angela back with you. And Coach, again, two teams, both with some positive things now coming off of this past weekend. And for the Mustangs and the Shockers, really, well, no surprise when you look at the starting five for each. Yeah, we're just four games into the league, and both of them are trying to, you know, establish themselves. I think that this is going to be a great matchup because they're they're both trying to get on the winning track. Although Wichita has won, Wichita State has won two of them. Um, I, they, they still need to get it rolling, and I think they'll do really well at home. We emphasized Deja Thomas at the top of the broadcast, but Mackenzie Adams, fellow senior, averaging 18 points a ball game, will try to help. SMU go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Wichita State scored in Rangie Bassard with almost those 19 points per outing the former all-conference player in the Missouri Valley Conference. 
So again, Lincoln Rose, Angela back with you in the third member of our crew down court side, Iggy Garcia. Iggy. Hey, Link. hey Lincoln, I got a chance a little bit earlier to talk, talk to assistant coach at Wichita State, Eva Laskowska. She told me that uh, one of the things that she's really enjoyed in her 19 years is the personal connection she has with head coach Adam. She says they've also won a lot of championships. She enjoys that and she says that that kind of relationship with someone in a professional level is very hard to find. So that's why she's been able to stay here for that long and she keeps look, she looks forward to many more years with her. Yeah, Iggy, that's a great point. Ava Lukowski, who uh, has known Keith Adams for a long time. They were together at UTEP, spent, I believe, a decade and a half now together. UTEP actually expressed disappointment that Lukowski didn't consider taking the head coaching job with the departure of Adams. Uh, but they remain a tandem. Keith Adams has her along with Bill Damoth, Kelly Bagley, really pleased with the staff she's brought to, again, her backyard here in Kansas, growing up in Oxford nearby. Anytime someone stays 19 years with you, it talks a lot about your character as a head coach because if you're unbearable, you know, sooner or later they're going to leave. But uh, bo both uh, Adams and Mays have great staffs, even though Mays has only been there for a couple of years. You know, Amy Smith, Bradley, they were both two Texas connections. They were at UT together. They came over together. And then, you know, Mike Brandt. So. Uh, both of them have solid staffs. They've been trying to keep them together, and uh, that's a big cornerstone of how you build a program. There is a name you and I have not mentioned yet. We'll go ahead and get it out of the way for the folks who are wondering. Alicia Froling. She was in that huddle for SMU on the outside looking in. She got injured just prior to the start of the regular season. Alicia Froling could give you a double-double just about any given night. She's one of the top all-time players already in SMU history with a year to go. They're hoping she'll redshirt come back next year, but the talented Australian's absence certainly has helped define the SMU season so far. She's just on the outer edge of your picture right now. And, uh, well, you're looking at one of her countrymen, the Australian right there, and Stephanie Collins, who will be in the starting lineup at six foot five. But this is an SMU team for the last three years. They have shattered their previous record for both block shots and rebounds. They still have size along the perimeter, and there you see her right in the middle, still trying to keep an upbeat attitude and trying to be an additional coach on that bench and in the locker room. Well, my, personally, I feel like one of the biggest blows to the American not having her as a player. Uh, I got to see her play a lot last year, and I, I think she was a first-teamer. She is amazing. She's so hardworking, and, uh, you know, no one plays harder than Alicia Froling. No one. So again, we hope to see her next year as a red shirt senior. About to get underway. They caught the roundhouse, Coke Arena, here on the campus of Wichita State. As we are underway, Collins went toe to toe there with Sabrina Lazada Cabbage. Had a couple of inches on her. First touch for Adams. Third and final year at SMU. 16 footer is good, and the senior has them out in front after transferring her freshman year from Arkansas, the former Razorback has made herself right at home with the Mustangs. That's a good sign for her. She was missing her mid-range jumper last game, so it's good to get her in rhythm. Last time you and I saw Rangie Bassard, number 35 there, without the ball in the post. A little slow start because a lot of teams have been able to game plan exclusively for her. She's able to bounce back against UCF with a strong second half. But this time, perimeter scoring, and the Shockers have their first lead early on. Well, I, I grew to love Cabbage last game. She's uh, she's kind of an unorthodox player, but uh, she gets it done, and that's a great stroke. And she just got it done on the defensive side, was able to tie up Collins. She's a tough competitor, but she got a nice stroke right there, good follow through, and you know, you know, she's got the range too. She makes one third of her shots from downtown, able to connect on her first try here tonight. So Shockers started off 0-3 in this, their maiden voyage in the American, but they've won their last two, one at home, one on the road. Bassard just off the mark and the rebound to Adams. Well, Rangy doesn't ever have a shot she doesn't like. You know, that's one thing about her. She's going to fire it up. That's why she gets a lot of takes and a lot of makes. Again, first team all-conference last year in the Missouri Valley, and Collins called for the footsteps. They have great size, the Mustangs do. They have both Collins at 6'5", they have Clara Bradshaw at 6'6", in that post, but they have struggled with some bunnies. I know you say cribs right there around the basket. Well, that's a good example. She didn't chin it. She went right into the stepping, and she, she kept the ball kind of loosely down low and then tried to hook it in, and it just wasn't clean. Otherwise, it's a size advantage that they could exploit against just about any team in this league. 
As that one will take a lap around and takes the hometown roll through for Kiki Thompson. Well, they're going to try to make them shoot that outside shot. Uh, looks like SMU's trying to run a little sagging defense against them, and uh, she knocked that one down. You see Keitha Adams across the way coaching up her squad, talking that time to Diamond Lockhart, who's really grown into her role this year. But she wants Kiki Thompson to continue to be more aggressive than she has been. Deja Thomas straight away won't go. And who touched it last? It's going to be back over to the Shockers. Well, it is year number two for the Mustangs. Travis Mays takes over last year for longtime Mustangs head coach Ronda Rompola. And here's a guy you talk about entrusting a lot of former head coaches to join him on his staff. He could have been a head coach a long time ago. But he coaches under names like Jody Conrad, Van Chancellor, Hall of Famers along the way. Most recently, Karen Aston at his alma mater of Texas. And he was finally ready to take the reins over at SMU. He found the right program. He liked what they stood for. It's a high academic program. He has to, you know, he has to recruit the right kind of kids. Adams showing her moves. Ultimately won't go. Rebound down to Thompson. And while Ariana Whitfield was trying to hold her ground, Thompson goes straight to the hole. Kiki just did a little show and a little go. She pretended she was going to make the pass and then took it herself. Nice finish. And that is the aggressive play that Keith Adams told us she was looking for. Quick release from the wing. And it's a triple for Whitfield on the opposite end, the freshman out of Houston. Whitfield's only shooting 29%, but that's not too bad from three-point range, and she's starting to gain her confidence. Last game, she had a pretty good game for him. Third leading score for the Mustangs, seven points a ball game. And there is a rebound, picking right back up where she left off on Saturday, Deja Thomas again. She tied the SMU all-time mark, 22 rebounds against ECU on Saturday in Dallas. As there you see, the woman who grew up oh, about 40 minutes from here, Keitha Adams had a good gig at UTEP. A lot of other programs throughout the years have tried to lure her away. But when the Shockers joined the American and the coaching job opened up, she knew she could come back home. Well, I think she's an outstanding hire for Wichita. She's won everywhere she's been, and she's going to win here too. So watch out, American Conference, because she's going to get it done. Wichita State parted ways with their previous head coach a year ago and went to a former head coach, a Hall of Famer, and Linda Hargrove to coach for the first time in a decade and a half, but that helped them bridge the gap for the final two months of the season so they could have a proper coaching search, which of course landed Keith Adams, who remembers attending some of Linda Hargrove's basketball clinics back in the day. Well, I hate to say my age, but Linda and I are, are uh, of that same era. So uh, we, uh, yes, I know Linda well, and uh, she was a great coach, and it was great that they could get, use her as a transition, and, and I think they, you know, they gave them enough time to make the kind of hire they needed. This was back when uh, there was no restriction on how often you could text or recruit. Yeah, yeah, back, back in the day. Just how many characters on your typewriter you could use? Yes. <laughs> As the rebound down to Lockhart. Again, Diamond Lockhart last year averaging just three and a half points a game as a junior. A year later, 10 points a night. Uh, ultimately one and done. Thomas with the rebound. Pretty quick shots on both ends. Uh, you know, kind of loose, but I, I kind of like the flow here because both teams are, you know, seem like they're getting in a little rhythm. I'm super impressed with the way Wichita has been passing the ball around in their quarter court. Um, SMU a little bit, you know, not so much. They're, they're, they're taking about one or two passes and trying to score. So Ariana Whitfield was trying to feed Deja Thomas, who got the whistle in her favor. Appeared as though she was being held. But a nice start here early on for both the Mustangs and the Shockers. Fifth all-time meeting where even two wins apiece for these programs. And so we'll wind up in the lap of Ambrosio. Well, that's the kind of shot they want. Perry had a clean look at it, about 12 feet, but just didn't knock it down. You know, they have that sagging man defense, and they, there's no place to go. Two on one. Able to dump it down to Adams just in time. Nice job by the Mustangs in the transition. That's pretty picture perfect two on one. When you have a two on one, you only want one pass, and that, that was one pass in the score. It has us a brand new ball game midway through the opening quarter. Nice turnaround look on the baseline by Angie Tompkins. 
Well, that's a nice, sweet little little fade shot that she just put up. They need that. They really haven't had much much of a post presence besides Bassard. Senior Tompkins, we saw her in a return to her hometown of Orlando last week against UCF. They have not lost since. Little position, man-to-man -man defense. John Asia Cash out to Whitfield. So both teams have gone to their bench here midway through. Watch how they sag and, and really dig down on those posts. They're not going to give you much inside. Just enough breathing room along the perimeter, and it's a triple for Lockhart. That's her eighth on the year. Well, she's already doubled what she's done last year. I think she's starting to feel comfortable with this team and, and uh, has the confidence to take that shot. Mentioned it was her eighth. She was just seven of her first 32. Thomas. Everything's going to the back of the rim with uh, SMU. Just, you know, nothing. I mean, maybe they're a little bit too excited here, trying to trying to work real hard to get this win, but just need to settle down and, and you know, hit those 12-footers. 5-0 run for the Shockers here at home. And again, they find the open shooter. Good from the right wing. Ambrosio again from Switzerland. Transfers over from Redlands Community College, now in her first year as a Shocker. One thing about these Shockers is they spot, they shot 45% in their last win, which is quite well, 36% from three point. So they're starting to kind of find their groove. You know, she said she's been working a lot more on their shooting and uh, they've been nailing them. Mustangs coming off their first win in conference play. The Shockers riding a two game winning streak of their own at home today, up by eight over the Mustangs. the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit. And a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. Right now, the Mustangs trailing the Shockers by eight. Largest lead of the ball game right now belongs to Wichita State. Past three years, the SMU program has been defined by the play of Alicia Froling out of Queensland, Australia. Again, absent this year with a knee injury. She's now with our Iggy Garcia. Iggy? Yes, I'm here with Alicia, and Alicia's been on injured reserve. Tell me a little bit about your involvement with the team since you've been, not been able to play. Um, it's been a big adjustment for me, obviously because I'm so used to being on the court and leading, but I've really just tried to be vocal, um, coaching and helping with little things, really helping the freshmen and yeah, just stuff like that. At this point, uh, how is your uh, recovery coming along and when do you plan to be back with the team? Um, I'm three months out of surgery on this Thursday, so it's still going to be a while, probably about six, seven more months. I'm really taking my time, obviously knee injuries aren't something to play around with. So it's going to be a while, but it'll be next season. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, right, thank you, Iggy. Uh, you can, again, tell a lot of maturity with Alicia, who ever since she was a freshman in a foreign country coming over from Australia with then her twin sister, Keely, and their uh, childhood friend, Stephanie Collins, she was expected to lead this team. And with her size on the perimeter, it just created so many mismatches over the years here in conference play. Not only her size, but she was the X factor for them. Uh, you can't measure her impact, it's too difficult. He can't replace her. He's talked about that. She was the heart, the soul, the leader. And you know, I'm sure we, at some point we have to stop talking about her, you know, because it is the year and she's not gonna play the rest of the year, but it has been a big adjustment for them and I think they're starting to kind of find their groove. Now, as a result, the Mustangs one and three in conference after going three rounds deep in the WNIT a year ago. 
But the Shockers right now on an 8-0 run, and they may make this a double-digit advantage soon enough. Tompkins, the senior, will go to the line, where she's 18 of 23 this year from the charity strike. I think the discipline that the Shockers have in their quarter court is really impressive, considering we have a new coach. We have three JUCO players coming from different places. We have three foreigners, uh, two Division One transfers, and a new coach. I mean, that's that's got to be challenging for Coach Adams, but I can tell her X no ability is is really really strong. These kids are showing patience and uh, hitting open shots. Yeah, you talk about how important chemistry is this time of year. Uh, I have to imagine for a while there they were all wearing name tags around one another. Well, exactly, and I think you know. Coach can coach can uh, attest that when you fir your first year, everyone's kind of excited. So I'm sure this, these kids are playing extremely hard for her. But, you know, they'll settle in a little bit. But still, there's got to be a lot of discipline as you grow out. I think we had a three in the key there. We'll note Clara Bradshaw in the ball game and plays with Stephanie Collins. Bradshaw in her second year, the transfer from TCU at six feet six. Has 28 block shots this year. That's third in conference. We did not see her in that win against ECU, but available here today. Well, no, we did not, and I'm, I'm happy to see her in there, but I'll tell you, SMU needs to cover the shooters. They're, they're catch-and-shoot kind of players. you got to run them off the line. You can't let them catch and get their rhythm and shoot it. They've got to close out on them quicker. You see their numbers from beyond the arc for the Shockers. It's a 13-0 run now here at home for Wichita State. Little 2-3 zone now, mixing it up a little bit. I knew she would do this, and it's really keeping them a little bit off guard. Adams into traffic will put an end to the drought for the Mustangs. Well, Adams has been to the line 110 times this year because she does just that. She attacks the rim, and that's what she's added to her game in the last couple of years, which is impressive for a little guard. Yeah, how good were the Mustangs the other day against ECU getting to the line against the Pirates? Exactly. She was 11 of 12, and she's their best free throw shooter, so nice person to have there. And now the ball back over to the Mustangs. Checking out Alicia Frey, the freshman, with some minutes out there. Her 19th appearance off the bench, and there you see Travis Mays to his left was his assistant Mike Brandt. Amy Smith-Bradley on the staff, as well as Erica White for Travis Mays. Um, Significant names in the world of women's basketball. And Shauna Ford Lavender, a former SMU standout in her own right as a former head coach at Abilene Christian on his staff is simply director of operations. SMU settling for the jump shot. They're not attacking, and their defense is pretty soft right now. Right now, they're four for four from three-point range. Look at that. I mean, they're, they're not being closed out on. They're not even getting their hands up. So. They need to have a little bit more uh, energy here on defense to uh, not let this game get out of hand. Tompkins is shooting better than 50% this year and makes that baseline jumper. And this will stay with the Mustangs on this end. So this was a 7-7 ball game. Midway through the opening quarter in Wichita State all of a sudden everything falling. Well, I think when you look at SMU, they're four of 12 and and uh, Wichita State is 7 of 12 and 4 for 4 from three-point range. So the person who makes the most shots wins the game. Who will be able to close out this period? Salvaged by Whitfield. And that'll be an air ball turnover back over to the Shockers. So 31 seconds on the game clock, a shot clock of 30 seconds coming up. And for the first time today, we see the freshman from Dallas, Morgan Smith, out of Highland Park High School. No shortage of talent in the backyard of SMU. In fact, their signing class this year, six players, half of them from the Dallas area going into next season as well. Let's see if SMU, I mean, see if a Wichita State waits for the last shot, 10 seconds or under. I'd like to see what coach has up her sleeve here. Up by a Baker's dozen, a chance to stretch it to 15. Have not missed from beyond the arc so far. And they're going to get a three-second call. Never get a shot off, and that means SMU will have just short of three seconds left here in the opening quarter, make it just short of five seconds in the opening quarter. Plenty of time to get it down the floor. Oh, great trap on the freshman. 
And as a result, the Mustangs will not be able to cut into the deficit. Wichita State finishes on a 15-2 run for the opening quarter. The Shockers have won their last two in the American, trying to get to 500 for the first time here in the early part of the new year. Second quarter coming up here on the American Digital Network. Potentially Shrek and Thaw's over to first in time double play and that ends the game. See your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Well, Wichita State winds up shooting 62% in the opening quarter. A perfect 4 for 4 from downtown Wichita as we take a look back at that opening quarter. Well, they have great, excellent ball movement. They have standstill shooters that are actually getting enough room to take that shot, and they work on their shot, and all those shots look alike, man. They, they must have a little routine that they're doing because every single kid has great follow-through and finish. The result was the same for each of those shots, obviously drained as Lockhart made both of hers as Lazada Cabbage as well as Ambrosio were each able to chime in as well from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, SMU just scoring from two players, three points from Whitfield, Adams with six. Beyond that, the rest of the team is 0 for 5 from the floor. As SMU shooting just 33% in that opening quarter, they went cold after the first seven points. SMU looks like they're just going through the motion. They don't look like they have any emotional attachment to this game. Uh, I don't I don't see a lot of communication on the floor. I, I just I don't feel the, the tenacity on the defense. And th this is a big wake up call. I mean, they need to get after it right now. Run people off the line, get up and get some steals, make something happen and attack the rim. You'll forgive the folks who chose to stay home this evening and watch here on the American Digital Network instead in Wichita as these are the final few minutes. We're in double digit temperatures today as we'll we'll head back into the uh, chilly evening soon enough of uh, single digits. Thomas against three shockers draws the contact and Deja Thomas will go to the free throw line. That's a tough shot. I mean, I, I really wish they wouldn't hold the ball so much. If you watch SMU, the players take it, hold it for one or two seconds, take it and hold it for one or two seconds. Now she has to take a really tough shot in there. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see a little better ball movement, move, player movement and ball movement for them. Deja is a 64% free throw shooter. We mentioned a career outing on Saturday afternoon at home. 15 points, 22 rebounds, four assists. It was strong at the free throw line as well. Well, Deja has the uh, motto, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. And she's going to go out and get it right now. She controls her own destiny as SMU with the first two points of the second quarter. Well, Coach must have been listening. He extended his defense a little bit, but this has been a soft 1-2-2, two, two, and, and it needs to be aggressive. With all the outside shooters they have, I'm not sure why they're not up in their shorts and playing a little bit of man. Well, trying to get in on the block party, Morgan Smith had 5'6 from behind, but we get a whistle on the foul. And Clara Bradshaw starts in the post here in the second quarter for SMU. You see Smith, one of the many Dallas area products, giving them about 12 minutes a night, making her 17th college appearance as a Mustang. 
when you play a zone, you want to tilt it, you want to counter it, and then you want to attack it. And they do a wonderful job of that. Taking it all the way around, getting into the middle of the zone. Well, it was good rotation. Deja Thomas had a block along the way, and ultimately a rebound came down to Michaela Reese soon after. Thomas ultimately four shockers collapsed on her. That was a big rebound by Perry on one end, and then back on this end, uh, they really did collapse on him and not give him anything. Wichita State coming off a home victory against Memphis and most recently a road win in New Orleans. An eight-point victory over Tulane. Those are the first two victories since joining the conference in conference play. After they went 9-9 last year, finishing fifth in the Missouri Valley Conference, that was a down year for Wichita State. This is a program that's no stranger to 20-win seasons. Again, Adams, six points in that opening quarter, looking to add in three more. Long rebound, Adams wanted it a scrum, and we're going to have a tie-up on the floor. Well, another, you know, back of the rim shot for Wichita and then a, a one and done. I mean, they're not giving them a lot of offensive boards. That's one thing coach talked about. They're going to try to really work on blocking out. And uh, they everyone just kind of scrapped it out. Possession O favoring Wichita State. And Travis Mays. No shortage of bow ties for the long basketball season. And they're going to get a walk on Jalea Preston. Preston, a Texas native in her own right. Wichita State's already been to Houston where they have a few players from that region. You know, Wichita State switching from the Missouri Valley Conference to the American all of a sudden has a little bit more natural exposure to some recruiting ground in the Lone Star State of Texas as they'll visit both SMU and Houston. Well, it's a great basketball school. That's what they're known for. That's what they focus on. And that's one reason Adams went there is because she wanted just to really get in that culture. We'll see this matchup again on February 17th in Dallas as Adams has it stripped away, trying to stay with it, and this ball will go to SMU on the possession arrow. And no, shot clock violation before the tie-up. Well, Adams missed the shot, went to go get it, and then got on the ground, and that's, that's great effort out of that senior. If you're SMU, you don't want possession here because that shot clock is not going to restart for you. They're going to take a look, I believe, whether or not there is time still. And that ball was tied up. But really, if you're SMU, you don't want to waste that possession arrow all of a sudden if you're just going to have to give it back. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to see Cash really let loose a little bit. I know she's just a freshman. But at 6'2", um, I don't know. I, I just don't think about, oh, you're a freshman, sophomore, you're a junior, you're a senior. I think about how much experience you've had in your life. And uh, I, don't, I don't think freshmen should waste their year. She has so much potential. I'd like to see her unleash herself a little bit. Shot clock was already at one when the players hit the deck. Uh, again, they are presumably looking whether there's any time left on the shot clock when dual possession was established. Possession arrow favors the Mustangs. But again, since they were on offense, that shot clock would not be reset you'd likely have a violation the moment they inbound the ball. Well, our, our, talk, our talk, officials just want to get it right. Talked a little bit to Travis Mays about winning on the road. And, you know, when you're 0-7, you're like, okay, what are we doing? Are we, are we going too early? Are we not going early enough? Uh, are we going two days in advance? Are we getting a good shoot around? You know, a lot of people like to do the same things, and he's like, he's tried everything. You know, he tries to mix it up a little bit because nothing's worked so far. And, uh, you know, so there's no there's no real reason why he thinks they're 0-7, but they, he does think that it's starting to wear on them. Mentioned his Mustangs were in the WNIT last year, another postseason appearance for SMU. Wichita State, last trip to the postseason, the NCAA tournament back in 2015. Mentioned this is a Shockers program. It, it's no secret that this is a basketball campus here at Wichita State, both men and women. Absolutely. Uh, it's, they're crazy over their basketball there uh, on both men's and women's side. And they have forever been. And I used to coach at Bradley, and I, I was in that conference, and it was very, it's a very tough, difficult place, the drum, to win it. 
Well, mentioned Diamond Lockhart, her emergence this year as a fifth-year senior, started her career back at Texas Tech, but she's your leading scorer with six points for the Shockers. Last year averaged just half that per ball game, this year averaging double-figure scoring. And, of course, you talk about a score in Mackenzie Adams, who's averaging 18 points a ball game, had six in that opening quarter. Yeah, I want to say that she just has a lot more confidence in shooting. Uh, probably with the shooting drills that they're doing, uh, whatever Adams has got them doing, she's got a good rhythm, Lockhart does. But she's a 3.9 GPA exercise science person, so you pro she probably has, like, you know, some calculations on that room, don't you think? They uphold this shot clock violation. It is Wichita State's basketball. And Mustang's applying a little pressure here in the backcourt. Let's see what kind of pressure. It's really just kind of a sag. You know, they're really not trapping. They're just backing out of it. So it's not really that that aggressive. Pass all the way to Preston. She comes in for a closer look. And finally, it's Lazada Cabbage. Five for five for the Shockers from beyond the arc here in this opening half. I, I just didn't like that defensive possession because they never they got to make every pass they wanted to make and then had a standstill shooter have a wide open shot. It's just not good defense by SMU. Great offense by Wichita. Second triple for Lazada Cabbage and Adams off the mark. Still looking for her first score of the second quarter. They tilt inside. What a great look inside. Good, oh. good defense by Cash. Yeah, nice recovery by John Asia Cash mentioned in her family tree. You'll find Swin Cash, the talented professional. But they you talk about how Wichita State has the advantage, but they're doing it without production from Rangy Bassard. It's everybody else stepping up. That's got to make somebody happy when Rangy's been averaging 20 points, and I don't think she's on the scoreboard yet, is she? 0 for 4. Yeah, 0 for 4. So, uh, But, you know, SMU's running a 1-2-2. Two, two. He's been in it the whole game so far. It's pretty passive, and their outside shooters are getting their shots, so you don't need Rangy inside. If you can get a 3, the way they're shooting it right now, SMU had the first two points this period. Since then, all Wichita stayed, and as I say that, no longer true. McKenzie Adams now with eight in the opening half. I like that set. It was an isolation for Adams. I think he needs to do more of that because uh, they're not making good decisions on offense. All time in SMU, when you look at the top single game performances, McKenzie Adams has two of the top five, including a 38 performance earlier this year. Good enough for third all time. That came against the Southland Conference's Nichols. As rebound down again to Stephanie Collins, who again got the start today in the post. Good rebound by Collins. I'd like to see her get a little more active here on this offense. Post this up. She's got a little size advantage. She just needs to get, get something done down there. Adams looking to enter double figures. We'll have to wait. Back of the rim again. Over the top and just a tad tall for the 6-2 target in Tompkins. Yeah, a little it inverted pass there, but only their fifth turnover of the game. So the way they're playing, I guess I can live with that. Yeah, this one led her all the way up the tunnel. Smith stops and pops, and she's off the mark, off the glass. Well, that's not a good shot. There's no rebounders in there. Half the team wasn't even half by half court. So they can't do that and expect to win. Lobbed in this time, able to find the target, Tompkins, and she goes right up off the glass for the easy kiss. Well, I'm going to take a timeout right now, and I'm going to change my defense because this defense isn't working. Travis Mays is going to have them play through it. Down by 14. A nice assertive dribble from Perry, but off the mark. What was my pregame? You got to hit your cribs. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's that's a great move, but it's not a good move if you don't finish. Cribs, bunnies, layups. Yep, all of all of the above, sir. Trying to work it into some traffic. Let's see if they have Collins over the back. Four and a half to go in the opening half, and it's Wichita State looking to find their third straight win in the American, their lead at 14 here inside the Roundhouse. I was the last person 
anybody's thinking is going to be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically, the goal is to let kids be kids while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate with one unifying purpose, to shock the world. It is 46 degrees cooler tonight over in Orlando, Florida, so you will forgive us if we shift our attention tomorrow here on the American Digital Network to Tulane at UCF. Again, look forward to having you with us 6 Central, 7 Eastern as we continue our coverage here in conference play of American Hoops. And of course, this weekend, we'll see the Mustangs again. SMU will then make their way to Orlando this weekend to thaw out against a very talented squad. You look at this conference, this is just highlighting some of the newer coaches in this league, inc including Coach Abe at UCF. She too able to take her Knights into the WNIT in year one last year. She's feisty. I mean, she's really feisty, and her team plays great defense. And I think anytime you can build a program around your great defense, your physicality, then you got longevity in the league. And I, I look for her to probably finish in that upper bracket, maybe top four. Everybody looking up at UConn. Last night, UConn, Gino does a great job of this stepping outside of conference play, a top 10 matchup on the road in Austin against the Longhorns, able to hang on for an impressive and entertaining win in women's basketball. USF, UCF, the two Florida schools climb their way up. Houston's hit a couple of tough spots in their schedule, uh, but that's still a much improved group for coach Ronald Huey. Yeah, they've been the surprise if we have had a surprise because they were picked to the bottom of the league and, and now they're, they're third. So, but uh, you know, it's a long season. We only have four games in it or five games for some people. So I think a lot of the coaches feel like they can still, you know, get back into it and make something happen and, you know, you never know. For Wichita State, they're trying to take advantage of a stretch here where they're playing three of four at home, included that win against Memphis last week. They'll be welcoming USF to town soon enough, and Angie Tompkins, with four points here recently, has it to a 16-point lead for the Shockers. Well, that was just weak defense, but good offense. I mean, she got it way low on the block and just did a little turnaround. Uh, they, should not, they shouldn't be allowing that post-entry so easily. And a nice stroke out of the right hand of Ariana Whitfield, the freshman. Well, they needed that really bad. Again, she's their number three scorer this year. Behind Adams and Perry. Usually when you play a zone defense, you like to jump a passing lane every two passes. They never let them continue to get, you know, their rhythm in their passing lane. They're, that was just, a, you know, an inverted pass. But I, I feel like SMU is allowing just every little pass to go wherever, and so they're, they're able to do whatever they want. So I'd like to see them jump a few more passing lanes. SMU shooting 29% here in this opening half. We saw Wichita State before that last timeout missed for the first time from beyond the arc. They're a modest five of six from downtown. Thomas back in side to Collins, and they can't take advantage. Instead, the foul called on Wichita State. Well, that's your second touch of the game, so I'm sure coach told them, hey, let's start pounding it down low a little bit. She brings it down right there, you know, where everybody can get it, which is not good. She, I mean, I, I don't know. She needs to be chinning. Credit Tompkins for slowing down the attack. Good screen from Collins. And they'll get a foul on the Shockers. As driving that time was Kiera Perry still looking for her first points tonight. Yeah, Kira Perry went down and took the ball to the rim, but I still think she could have finished that. She just got kind of sloppy at the end. You got to get tough. You got to get in there. You got to finish that. She's had 10 or more points in seven of her last eight ball games. Mentioned Ofer tonight from the floor. Just kind of notice it's just a little bit slow. It's a lot of dribbling, 
A lot of holding. Thomas into Collins. No problem catching it. And they're going to say Lozada Cabbage, despite being behind Collins, got nothing but basketball on the block. Up by 13. Watch him clog Bassard inside. They're not giving Bassard anything. She touches it. And coming through, Deja Thomas denied. Good defense that time. Remember, SMU is one of the top shot blocking teams in this conference, even without Alicia Froling. Froling's been so prolific over the years that Stephanie Collins uh, against ECU with a couple of block shots actually passed Froling for the all time number two spot. You figure they'll be going back and forth on those charts. As Bradshaw now in for Collins. And Bradshaw just tries to force it into Thomas. Mustangs still with a chance to put points on the board. Adams can't get it to drop through, but she'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, I don't think there's anything really there in that high-low game. Uh, one thing that Wichita is doing is tripling the low, low post player, so I would like them just to reverse it one more time, and then they can get it in. But they can't get it in on the, the initial high-low. Shockers have been scoreless for the last two minutes. See if SMU can take advantage of this drought as Mackenzie Adams in 80% free throw shooter. No doubt about the first one there. One of the things about the American is we all have great coaches in this league. So you start getting predictable where that high-low is what all you'll do, then you're, you're not going to get it at night in and night out. So you got to bring some wrinkles in your offense, and uh, other people have to emerge. And I just think attacking the bucket for them would be the way to go. Travis Mays, who after finishing his career as a player at Texas, had an NBA career to follow before he Return to the bench as a coach. And a long two, and there's Ranji Bassard. We mentioned a lot of what Wichita State offensively has done tonight has been without their leading scorer putting the ball through the hoop. This time she comes through for two. Well, she said, if you're not going to let me have it on the inside, I'll just take it on the outside. And Bassard with the block as well. Starting to lighten it up a little bit last couple minutes of the game. And... SMU will get a piece of it. Maven Adams, who returned the favor, getting a hand on the ball, but it stays here with the Shockers. Final minute and a half of the opening half. We'll look to check in with both head coaches at halftime, get their thoughts. And it's as if the Shockers know every spot on this floor. Well, it's called player movement and ball movement, and it's beautiful. As more baseline success a moment ago from Faye, the freshman, and there's SMU again trying to make it a little more manageable going into halftime. Well, Adams got her stroke that time. She's been deep on the back of the rim all night, and she uh, found the hole. She has 13 points in 15 minutes. Now, I'm just surprised that here, here we're going, I think, a little box in one. They're, 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 uh, Running a little bit of a box and one, it looks like. We'll get a push on Thomas there. That'll stop the clock at 47.1. I'm just surprised that SMU doesn't go to a man to man at all. And I don't know if he doesn't feel confident in it or uh, or what, but I, I think once you kind of feel like the you got a 13 point deficit, you got to switch up your defenses a little bit to see what, what they're going to do. Shockers with another chance to build on their 13-point lead. See what kind of defense uh, they have and what if they take the air out. Driving in and Bradshaw. Again, your number three shot blocker in the American comes through. It'll still be Shockers basketball, however. Well, she needed that to get her game going. Great block coming from the weak side. Still 16 seconds separate the two clocks. They're going to call a walk. SMU has held and will have the basketball for potentially the final shot of the opening half. Yeah, last two times they've tried to run the clock down in the quarters, they've had a turnover. So that's something I, I think they need to work on. Defense! 
They're trying to keep the ball away from Adams, but she gets it. A little high post screen here to get her shot. Adams trying to make things happen. We'll go to the free throw line again. Mackenzie Adams tonight, 5 of 12 from the floor, 13 points and three rebounds in just 16 minutes. It's been very efficient out there, but needs some help from teammates. Yeah, she's having to go one on three to get her shot there, but she's got the heart to make to make it happen. Only three of the nine Mustangs we've seen tonight have scored six points for Whitfield. The other two points belong to Thomas. Now that I bragged about her free throw shooting, she misses one. See how it feels? Yep. An 11 point ball game still in favor of Wichita State with four and a half to go. We'll talk to Wichita State head coach Keitha Adams going into the locker room as her Shockers have won their last two. Looking to run that winning streak to three in a row if they can keep this up. Wichita State with an 11 point lead at the end of the first half. Go and get it. Go and get it and that's what they're doing and she's got a confident little team here. And they're, they're a good looking team. I mean, the, I call them a team, meaning together everybody accomplishes more. Let's check back in with Iggy. He's with head coach Keitha Adams. Hi coach, your team has been pretty red hot shooting all those three pointers. Uh, how do you think they're, that you're gonna be able to continue to do that? Uh, is that the plan? Well, we're gonna have to get the ball in the paint more and uh, I need to look to get in transition more and get some fast break opportunities. Uh, but we definitely got to find a way to get the ball inside more than what we did the first half. Are you overall pretty happy? Or is there anything else you're going to change? Well, we're going to keep mixing up our defenses. The biggest thing is we got to rebound the ball. They're a great rebounding team. If we hold them to one shot, that helps our chances. But we got to find a way to get some inside presence. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Thank you. Thank you, Iggy. Shockers shoot 50% in the first half, including five of six from beyond the arc. They find their stride midway through the opening quarter. 33-22, they take the lead in the locker room here on the American Digital Network. Seven thousand student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Hope your Monday is off to a great start. Thanks for tuning in to an all new episode of The Rise. I'm Haley Outen. Let's take a look at who took home this week's league honors after standout performances on the hardwood this past week. On the men's side, Memphis guard Jeremiah Martin averaged over 28 points a game in a 2-0 week for the Tigers. He posted a career high 31 against Tulane, scoring the most points by any Memphis player since Will Barton in 2011. Rookie of the Week honors went to Temple guard Nate Pierre-Louis. The freshman posted a career-high 23 points versus Memphis and had a career-high 7 rebounds in Temple's win at SMU. A handful of other players had impressive performances as well. Here's a look at this week's American Honor Roll. On the women's side, Wichita State forward Ranji Bassard took home this week's top honor. The senior helped the Shockers pick up their first two wins in the American, averaging 21 points, 9.5 boards, 3 steals, and 2.5 blocks over the week. Bassard has scored 10 or more points in all but one game this season. Freshman of the Week honors went to Cincinnati forward Amari Thomas. The rookie contributed 11 points to go along with 6 rebounds and 3 assists in a win at Houston on Wednesday. While on Saturday, she chipped in 14 points and seven boards in a win over Temple. And here's a look at the performances that received recognition on this week's conference honor roll. Thanks for joining us on this all new episode of The Rise. Be sure to check back later tonight as we'll bring you an all new episode of Mondays with Mike. College basketball analyst Mike O'Donnell will break down all of the men's basketball top headlines across the conference. Have a great week.
I was the last person anybody's thinking is going to be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically, the goal is to let kids be kids while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit. And a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. Be American. Power. 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 Power for life. War on I-4 champions, American Athletic Conference champions, Peach Bowl champions, an undefeated 13-0 season, and acclaimed national championship. What's a better way to celebrate than here at Walt Disney World? I don't think you realize how big your school is until you come to Disney World and see everybody wearing UCF. Thousands of UCF fans lined up to watch the UCF football players, the Marching Knights, cheerleaders, athletic director Danny White, President John Hitt, and the one and only Mickey Mouse celebrate their Peach Bowl win and undefeated season. Tremendous turnout. I, uh, just a few years back, you know, we, uh, we did a similar parade after winning the the Fiesta Bowl. This is bigger. One subject recently has made headlines all over the sports world for the Knights. Their self-proclaimed national championship title. Both of us just said, yeah, that's right, national championship. National champions. I mean, they beat Auburn, who beat Alabama and Georgia, so that's a starting point. You're writing us 12 and we're undefeated, beat Auburn, like, no, like, national champions. Athletic Director Danny White first made the claim to national champions immediately after the Peach Bowl win against Auburn. I feel like we've, we've earned the right to claim the national championship and I've been surprised at how, uh, how it's, the, that, that narrative's kind of grown nationally, but I think it's good for the sport because I think we need to get to a better place. We need to expand the playoff and be at a place where the, the, the champion is decided on the field. The Knights staff say that the claim raises awareness to a more just playoff system. It's really not a fair system as we have it now. And whether it's UCF and the Knights or any other team, what we all deserve is not a specific win, but an opportunity to go out and earn a win. And I think it's hard to contend that the American Conference, uh, UCF, don't, don't deserve that opportunity, the opportunity to win or lose. While the season was definitely successful for the Knights, quarterback and Peach Bowl offensive MVP Mackenzie Milton hopes to continue the winning streak into next season. Yeah, I think I think it does a lot. You know, I think uh, I think it, it boosts a, a sense of confidence that we can play with anybody, and uh, I think we just want to keep keep things rolling. There's only there's only one way to go: just keep going up. And uh, I think our guys are ready to attack uh, spring ball and, and and summer workouts. Milton during the parade stood at the top of a float with the Peach Bowl defensive MVP and 2018 NFL draft bound Shaquem Griffin. I mean, we're just kind of embracing the moment, saying, wow, like, we really, we really made it to this point. Um, and, you know, I was just kind of enjoying that moment with him, uh, knowing that he's moving on to the NFL and he's going to do his thing. So it was, just, uh, it was just pretty cool being up there with, with my brother for maybe one last time. So it was, it was pretty neat. Griffin was not the only one whose last game was the Peach Bowl. President Hitt announced in late October that he would be retiring after 26 years at UCF. You know, it, it will be bittersweet, no question about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, we've, we've got a wonderful group of young men. Uh, I have every expectation that they'll compete at a high level on, in an ongoing way. And I'm going to be their number one fan out there. Reporting for Campus Connect, I'm Brianna Sorensen. Miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets at the American Athletic Conference Men's Basketball Championship. All the excitement of tournament basketball starts March 8th and runs to the 11th at the Amway Center in Orlando. 
For tickets, call the Amway Center box office or visit theamerican.org for more information. Spending the last 16 seasons as the head coach at UTEP, Keitha Adams brings a plethora of coaching experience in her first year at Wichita State. The Oxford, Kansas native has a new challenge presented in front of her, trying to guide a team that finished fifth in the Missouri Valley Conference last year into a new challenge in the American. We're just working together, uh, but uh, I'm excited. I think they've been, um, I think they've been very responsive, uh, and I think we're enjoying one another. Um, we're working hard, and also uh, I'm enjoying being around these guys every day, and I think that's uh, important. So they've been great. One of the challenges of taking on a new team is getting them to adjust to a new system. We're still in a very much thinking mode where we don't know it yet. I mean, that's the repetition rep, 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 rep. Uh, you know, I could put a play in, and I, I think, you know, they're learning it. And then there's that next phase of, of understanding what we're really trying to get out of it. I mean, understanding what we're doing it for and why we're doing it. And um, they're doing a good job of, of being great listeners and, and being responsive to it. But uh, we just need more reps. I just think we just need more practice. And the more we practice, the more it's going to become automatic. Adams' new coaching tactics have been an adjustment for Wichita State's eight seniors. We're trying to make sure we do the right things, and as Coach said, it's a learning curve for us right now, even as seniors. So we want to make sure that when she does implement something new, that we go out there and, you know, we work on it, we perfect our craft, and then we understand exactly what we're looking for. That way, the second group that comes in, which will involve some of our newbies, that they understand the same thing as well. So we just want to make sure that we're on the same page as the upperclassmen and then to be on the same page with our underclassmen. One unique trait that Adams has implemented into the team so far is patience. I think we've definitely learned to be uh, patient because Coach Adams has been very patient with us as well. Uh, with uh, the time that she has put in, of, uh, you know, not actually, you know, getting on us and getting in our face when we don't do something right or, you know, something like that. So I think we both learned to be, uh, coach and the team have learned to be patient and work well with one another. Adams and her staff signed six players during the November signing period, taking the first step into rebuilding a women's basketball program that looks to get back into postseason contention. For Campus Connect, from Wichita State, I'm Grant Cullen. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities, and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate. With one unifying purpose, to shock the world. Potentially Shrek and Stalls over to first in time double play and that ends the game. See your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. 
balanced approach in the opening half from the Shockers of Wichita State. Seven of the nine players who saw time on the court able to enter the scoring column led by Tompkins with 10 points along the way. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck back with you here on the American Digital Network. 14 points from one of your top scorers in the league, Mackenzie Adams for SMU, but not a lot of help for the Mustangs. No, no one really showed up on offense. Uh, Thomas had a great game, 15 points last time. She only has two points now. Cash, no Collins, no, 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 a little bit of Whitfield, but they, they have to show up. They're seniors. They've got to put it down and get after it. A lot of high percentage looks for Wichita State while SMU had to settle. Well, Wichita did everything. They were working on all cylinders and they out rebounded SMU. And if you out rebound SMU and shoot better than them, it's going to be a long night for SMU. Uh, Deja Thomas, of course, Blair Bradshaw would get a block in along the way, but it's a shocker squad that would shoot five of six from beyond the arc. This was a 7 7 ball game before all of a sudden the shockers found their rhythm once again here at home. Let's check back in with Iggy Garcia, now joined by SMU head coach Travis Mays. Iggy? Hey, Coach Mace, how are you? Uh, what do you need to do to get your uh, production up uh, as far as the three-pointers and for that matter, stop the three-point from the other team? Well, for us to do anything, we got to play with a with a sense of urgency. I watched that entire first half, the first quarter and the second quarter. My team did not play with a sense of urgency on the defensive end, nor did they have any sense of urgency on the offensive end. We're going to have to play a whole lot harder. We're going to have to want to compete in order to get back in this game. And for that matter, what do you need to do to get your role players to well, first and foremost, we need to get some type of rhythm, and we need to either get to the foul line or attack the basket a little bit more aggressively. We're not doing any of those things. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate more than welcome. As always, thanks to both head coaches for joining us at halftime as we take a look at the numbers that stand out from the opening two periods of play. Well, if you look at the numbers, uh, everything's pretty similar except for the assists and the rebounds and we'll, we'll mention the assists are a little skewed there yeah uh, on the screen well not 40 i probably like 14 or something like that but uh rebound wise i mean i think that's a big one you know because i think anyone feels like they can beat smu if they can out rebound them because so much they that, that they do ha happens off the offensive rebound you miss a shot get another shot and uh with wichita out shooting them and out rebounding them uh it's really giving them the the uh the heads up that was four assists on seven made field goals in the opening half for the Mustangs, who begin with the basketball down by 11 here in the third quarter. They dropped their first three games in conference play, bounced back with a nice showing against ECU on Saturday at home. And forced out of bounds, they'll call the bump foul on Ambrosio. Again, native of Switzerland, first came over to the States to play Juco ball at Redlands Community College the past two years. So coach came out with the set that time. Not sure Cash really wanted to go hard to the basket on that, but I like the set. And this will be back over to the Shockers. Give the credit to Lazada Cabbage for helping win that rebound. Well, Cabbage is a little bruiser. She's not going to give too much up. She's she's a physical kind of player, and uh, I like I like her rhythm tonight. Sabrina Lozada Cabbage without the basketball, down in the low post right now, battling with Collins. Won't have the size advantage, just hopes for better positioning. And again, you see the shooting discrepancy here in Wichita. Slipping through, trying to kick it out, and we got a three-second call against SMU defensively. Well, I've never heard of one of those. Bassard, she has been quiet in the last two first halves that we have witnessed in person. Well, mainly because of the type of defense SMU's made a decision that, you know, since she's been 20 point scorer, if we take her out of the game, we might win. But with all these other players stepping out, I think he's changing his thought pattern a little bit. And I, I see a little bit more man to man here. So still plenty of time here for Wichita State into Sabrina Lozana Cabbage, able to hang on to it. Wichita State does a good job of going baseline to baseline. Look how many times this ball has reversed. Not many kids, not many teams have that kind of patience. 
SMU continues to clamp down on the basketball. Finally will strip it away. The steal from Whitfield. Adams forces the issue. Blocked by Lozada Cabbage. Goes out of bounds. Will stay with SMU. But again, offense and defense. Truly a complete game from the junior this year. Out of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Sabrina Lozada Cabbage. Well, good defensive transition on that uh, series by Wichita State. Good turnover right here. And just simply a foot race as Ambrosio, the junior, with plenty of confidence on the finish. There's two things that Coach Adams said at halftime they needed to do. One was get their transition game going, bingo, right there. And number two is she wants her post players to touch it more, and they've already been touched it about five or six times in the first two series. Lobbed into Collins. This time she gets it to go, and this time she's headed to the free throw line as Lozana Cabbage will pick up the foul. Well, I'm happy to see that. She took a little more time. She still brings it down a little bit, but that was a stronger finish with uh, Cabbage hanging onto her arm. That needs to be advantage SMU every time. Well, every time, but she doesn't get it chinned where it's actually protected. It's still a little bit loose, and it's just uh, a few more, I guess, drills that will make her, you know, focus on that. Collins is just 7 of 24 from the free throw line this year. 7 of 25. Again, she made the basket. That was for the three-point play, and now there's a possession for SMU. It'll be a productive opportunity, trying to trend the double-digit deficit down to single digits here. Well, I mean, they're in this game. They just need to change the whole energy level. If they get the energy level, somebody needs to make something happen, and I don't know who it's going to be because Thomas seems to have taken the night off so far. They'll double down, and ultimately that'll affect the shot of Kira Perry. This stays with SMU. Another fresh shot clock coming up. And Kiara Perry, three double-doubles in her last eight games. Giving them about 31 minutes a night to coach Travis Mays in SMU as a starter. Another turnover. That was just a sloppy inbounds play by Thomas. Just, I just feel when SMU goes to the rim, they, they, if they get bumped, they, they get kind of uh, soft. Diamond Lockhart adds two more. Diamond Lockhart's been on fire tonight. And eight points for Lockhart, who's only missed once, has only missed once from the floor this evening, and SMU with another turnover. Well, she, oh, that's Diamond Lockhart off the little little bunny. So another chance to stretch the lead after it had been down to 11 a moment ago. Well, every possession matters when you're on the road, and that is not a good possession right there. Bassard with a team photo of the Mustang surrounding her. Great effort on the weak side glass by Bassard, but horrendous defense by SMU. I mean, they basically dribble and brick a, a layup, but she's got a direct line to the goal. No, no help side comes in, and then Bassard just powers it up and one. You can kind of see some frustration off SMU with each other. They're kind of looking at each other like, why didn't you guard her? How did you let her in there? And that's 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 kind of bad when that happens when you're on the road. you got to really come together and assume the responsibility. He just took Thomas out, so it's not been her night so far. Randy Bassard makes it a three-point play. And she's from Manville, Texas. Started her career in the Big Ten at Minnesota. Now, fifth-year senior with Wichita State. And Cash, nobody was going to follow her to the rim, so she'll put the punctuation on it. That's a good uh, substitution for Coach, bringing in Cash. She's capable of that, and that was a great drive. And Travis Mays really loves what John Asia Cash is doing right now. The freshman really starting to hit her stride. Such a competitive young player. Was banged up a lot of this summer, but finally is healthy, and it's showing. And SMU will get the ball back. Good penetration against that zone, but uh, not a great feed inside. Wichita State still shooting better than 53% in this ball game. They haven't attempted a three-pointer here in the second half after shooting five of six through the first two quarters. Lincoln Rose, Angela Beck, Iggy Garcia down court side with you today on the American Digital Network.
Will stop and pop for three, won't go, and Clara Bradshaw is going to be called for being out of position on that rebound, committing the foul. At least I got some ball reversal on that that play right there, and that was a good looking shot. They just missed it, but I'd rather see that than a lot of holding like they've been doing. So that was a better possession. Bradshaw is in the mix with the Mustangs of post players averaging about four points, four rebounds, and now they scoring just isn't part of their game. And so when Froling was not available this season, asking them to make that adjustment this late in their careers just was not going to be an easy task. Time they throw it over Bradshaw, able to close in time to force the kick out, and still only missing once tonight from downtown the Shockers, this time the triple, courtesy of Ambrosio. That's awesome inside-out action. Ball goes deep inside, they collapse, and they hit the open man on the outside. And SMU is going to give it right back. Ambrosio now eight points, including a pair of triples. Well, I'm not sure what coach said to him at halftime, but uh, Travis Mays, but I don't know if they heard it because it seems like they're kind of doing similar things to what they did the first half. That translates to 86% from beyond the arc for Wichita State. All of a sudden, 55% from the floor doesn't look so good. No, nope. and we're back in that 1-2-2, two, two, and they're eating it up. Well, turn around from 13 feet, ultimately just won't fall for Faye, the freshman, and a tie-up with possession arrow favoring Wichita State. Well, Wichita's given SMU a little bit of their own medicine where they're coming in there and trying to rip it out of their hands. That's Cash as a freshman asserting herself. She's saying move it, move the ball. Look at them move the ball. They rarely hold it. Good court spacing for them, good inside out action. So, like I said earlier in the half, I would like to see SMU jump a passing lane. There you can see Thomas on the bench. She just doesn't look like herself. I, I don't know if she is frustrated or just maybe not feeling well or just not having a good night. Because after that kick ball, the shot clock stayed, or pardon me, the ball stayed with Wichita State. See Collins and Deja Thomas, two of their big contributors in the post typically, both on the bench right now. Instead, it's Cash and Bradshaw. And the Shockers will give it back. 4.35 to go here in the third. Wichita State right now with a 17-point lead at home, finding their stride as the Shockers up on SMU fifth all-time meeting. As you're watching live tonight, women's basketball on ADN. 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Don't miss the chance to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Well, Wichita State up on SMU, their first ever meeting as conference foes in the American fifth all-time meeting, tied two games apiece. Take a look back at an eventful week in the American. Again, your freshman of the week up there with the Bearcats. Thomas with Cincinnati, 12 and a half points, six and a half rebounds, filling up the box score with three assists and the two matchups for the Bearcats this past week in the American. And of 
course, in conference play. Talk about among your best players, Randy Bassard. A little quiet here tonight once again, but otherwise has been consistent. We expect she'll start to find a rhythm at some point here late in the ballgame. Yes, but I don't know if I need her to. You know, if I'm if I'm the coach, I'm 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 thrilled. Because in a lot of their games, she was their only you know, big time score or, or their only double digit score. So to have her just kind of get with the flow, give them the rebounds, maybe get some low double digits. I'm sure that coach likes the look of that team better than the one with her scoring 20. She helped lead the Shockers last week to their first ever home win, their first ever road win here in this new conference. Meanwhile, you see Cincinnati, UConn, USF, SMU and Temple all represented on the honor roll last week, including Deja Thomas, those 22 rebounds tying the all time mark at SMU at a career high 50 points as well as a career high four assists a great night from Deja back on Saturday she's been quiet though here today they've done a nice job matching up against her and you mentioned Rangie Bassard has seen her teammates step up and fill some gaps well Rangie Bassard you know good for her she's a senior she's gone through some coaching changes um, she transferred from Minnesota you know and now to have her senior year her to come come and you know be the type of player she is uh, that, that makes a great story. Well, what can the Mustangs do here down the stretch? They have almost a quarter and a half to work with. Down by 17. And it's still McKenzie Adams making things happen. Well, it, it was a great shot and a great move one on three, but they're having to create their own shots and that's what's difficult. 16 points for Adams in 22 minutes tonight. The rest of her teammates have a dozen combined. Look at that ball movement. And still looking for an offensive rebound, perhaps. They'll say that never hit the baseline, simply a tie-up possession favoring the visitors. SMU. Didn't get what you wanted in the end of that, but one thing about the Shockers is they can they control the tempo of a game. They they want to control the tempo, and they do by being an excellent quarter court team. And it's going to be hard for them if they get the sizable lead to, to lose a game down the stretch because they have a lot of lot of uh, control and maturity. Wichita State's led by as many as 17. They haven't scored in the last two minutes. SMU's been able to take two points off the deficit, but nothing more this trip down another back of the rim shot so I'm gonna take her in the gym and I'm gonna figure out why her shot keeps going to the back of the rim you know is it is it you know I it just it just is consistent in this whole game Ranji Bassard's been getting a breather on the bench she's about to come back in and we'll have a chance here with the clock stop at 309 to go in the third quarter well, Bradshaw ca caused that turnover because when you're trying to do an up and over over a six foot six kid not a very good pass So Michaela Reese, one of the seniors for the Mustangs, bringing the ball up the floor, native of Colorado Springs. And an offensive foul, SMU will never get a shot off that trip down. Well, I'm gonna go back to what I've said before about SMU. They tend to tilt you and then they stay on that side and then they try to force it in and they never get it to the other side. So until they learn to get some ball reversal in their offense, they're gonna be too predictable. Officially another turnover by the Mustangs. That one well off the mark, winds up with Adams. Nice job by the Shockers back in transition, but a foul will be on Tompkins and Adams will go back to the free throw line where she's three for four today for three of her 16 points. Well, 114 free throws for the year. Uh, you know she was going to go, and that you know that's a one on three. Most coaches are going to say pull it back, pull it back. But you know when you got Adams, who's going to more than likely draw the foul and cash in on two at the free throw line, you're happy. So four of five now from the charity strike, right at her 80 percent on the season. Again, showed up at SMU three years ago on her final year. Sixth in the conference in scoring. And now 18 points for Adams right at her season average for head coach Travis Mays. You know, this is a Shockers team for, with a new head coach, Keith Adams. She saw she had eight seniors 
and at the very least wanted to make sure this was a positive experience down the stretch. Well, they're picking some wins up, starting to pile them together. Bassard with the second chance opportunity now will go to the free throw line. And it's Ranji Bassard among those eight seniors this year. She got caught a little bit underneath here and had to kind of back up. And uh, but she still fought hard and never quit on that and got the got the reward at the free throw line. Right now, SMU's in this three quarter press, right? I just I wish it was different. Do a full court press, try to trap somebody because all they're doing is actually slowing the game down. And right now they need to speed the game up. So it's not really working in their favor. That free throw ends a three and a half minute drought. Now, obviously, it's still a drought from the floor for Wichita State, who's missed their last five shots. And yet, somehow, a 15 point lead. Well, because SMU's missing theirs, too. And uh, really, it's, it's gotten a little bit ugly here. So they're on one side of the floor right now. Let's see if they get to the other side. Okay, they do. Now, let's see what happens. Reese was matched up with Lockhart. Finally, the open look, and it's off the mark. Mustangs have struggled. That was Ariana Whitfield. Bassard tried to go with the step to the side, and she's going back to the free throw line. A little step through move, strong move to the hole. Didn't get the end one, but uh, got to the front of the rim. She's getting it done at the line. She's an 80% free throw shooter, and it's it's kind of unusual to have a, a big that, that good at the line, but she's uh, she's solid all around. She's four for four tonight from the charity stripe, just two of eight from the floor. And that's her ninth point now. Like you said, she's gonna get it sooner or later, right? We mentioned it is a four minute drought for Wichita State, a two and a half minute drought for SMU from the floor. Reese asking for it. Instead, Lozana Cabbage with the steal on the far side. Lozana Cabbage took some steps, the walk. Thought about the shot, thought about passing it, and well, there was at least one thought and one step too many. So now you got a minute 28. You gotta you gotta get as many offensive you know, chances as you can. So I'd like to see a couple quick hits here. Run some baseline screen, you try to get a quick shot. They're kind of just in the slow motion. They're down by 17. They need to pick it up. Where's that sense of urgency talk, co uh, Coach Travis talked about at half court, half time? Kenzie Adams has 18 of SMU's 30 points. SMU's gone three minutes without a field goal. As Reese unable to end that drought right there, the rebound tapped over Ambrosio. And that will end a five minute drought for Wichita State from the floor. Everything going the way of the Shockers now. Well, that's kind of the way the night's gone. Uh, they miss the shot and then they don't get back in transition. Uh, they're just flat, they're turning around in the middle of the floor. Biggest discrepancy here tonight. A 19 point lead at home for Wichita State. Inside in Bassard and double figures, you knew eventually she would get hers. Well, she's going to get hers, but also she has a coach that wants her to touch it. So good for the coach for, you know, making the players uh, get it to the inside player where they got good good percentage. Well, Lazana Cabbage had a clean block of Adams, but a moment later, it's Bassard over the back. It'll be 15.9 seconds remaining here. In the third, Deja Thomas, two points tonight, both from the free throw line. Yeah, I think it's just really hard when you're building a team because these aren't your players necessarily. And Coach Travis has come in here and inherited an entire team. And you just want these seniors to know this is your team. It's not my team. You know, it's, it's Perry's team. She's a senior got Reese as a senior you know Deja Thomas is only a junior but it's still her team you know Bradshaw is a senior and Collins you know I mean these guys just have to want it more than they are and uh, 
they have to absorb a bigger role than what they have. Yeah, there's five active seniors for SMU. And Wichita State looking for the final punctuation of this third quarter. A 21-point lead for the Shockers at home. As they're looking to make the most of their first appearance here inside the roundhouse on the American Digital Network. Three different Wichita State Shockers tonight in double figures with still a quarter to spare. Fourth quarter up next. Kentley Shrighton falls over to first in time double play and that ends the game. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit and a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. Be American. Power. 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 Power for life. Wichita State tax 10 more points on their lead from halftime outscoring SMU 20 to 10 in that third quarter and coach turnovers will do it to you ultimately 14 turnovers by the Mustangs lead to 19 points off those turnovers for Wichita State yes and that that in the rebounding war which is usually SMU they've out rebounded most of their opponents all year but 27 rebounds for Wichita and 19 for SMU tonight is a big part of the story. Besides the shooting percentage, um, you know, shooting wise, they just can't get on track. SMU shooting, what, 27%? Yeah, look, Shockers have 12 turnovers of their own, but the Mustangs simply have not been able to get those to translate into easy transition buckets of their own. And as a result, they are on the road tonight against this Shockers group and enter the fourth quarter trailing by 21 the largest discrepancy now of the ball game yeah as flat as smu looks tonight i mean they haven't been able to get their transition game going uh they just really it's just not the team that we saw against ecu uh, i don't know i think tom thomas is a little flat maybe because she gave it her all the other night i don't know i mean it sounds like an excuse but when you, when you have 22 boards in a game you've been you you fight hard but They've got to be ready mentally every single night, and I don't think this is anywhere near their best, anywhere near a performance that they can be proud of. For Wichita State, Randy Bassard now does have the team high 13 points to go with five rebounds. Tompkins had 10 points at halftime, still stuck on 10. Lockhart with 10 points of her own as well. Now for SMU, the game high, 18 points, belongs to Mackenzie Adams, who is on the bench right now. As Travis Mays will look for someone else to elevate their game. Yeah, Cabbage has a little little scootsy foot problem. You know, she likes to take a step before she puts it down. There's a little look at Adams right there. Uh, she can't be happy. She she gave it her all, uh, but she she needs a little help. 18 points in 26 minutes for her. If that goes, it would have been a three instead. Off the mark and off the mark would sum up a lot of the shooting tonight for SMU. Well, I look for Wichita right now to take the air out of the ball. Uh, as good as they are in the quarter court, I look for Coach Adams to get, you know, 10 or 12 passes of possession and uh, kind of milk that clock a little bit. And the Shockers started 0-3 in conference, just like SMU, but wins over Memphis and Tulane this past week have been building some confidence 
Entering the heart of conference play now. Again, the freshman, Morgan Smith. I think we've yet to see what Morgan Smith's all about. She's still trying to get her progressions in and get quality minutes as a freshman. So I know she's a standstill three-point shooter, obviously, but uh, I think she's a very smart, uh, she has a very good IQ, you know, basketball IQ. Ambrosio whistled for the foul. As you see, first year, Shockers head coach Keitha Adams. She had several coaching positions in the state of Kansas, including at Independence Community College for JUCO ball before taking that UTEP job in Conference USA. Obviously, coming from Conference USA, she is familiar with a lot of the programs now in the American. She yeah. knows, where, she knows where, where to eat when they're on the road. Well, she does, and she knows how to win. And, uh, you know, Conference USA, she's the only coach ever to get three Coach of the Year honors in that league. Um, she went 35 and one as a coach uh, at Independence College in her last two years. That's kind of scary. I mean, cause you, that means you can just take a play. I mean, they kind of come in and out of JUCO. You know, you got freshman, sophomore every year, so you're, you're reloading every year. And she was capable of doing that. So it's pretty impressive. And that ability certainly helps her out in a year one like this with so many new pieces for Wichita State. What is not new is the Shockers draining the three ball. They're now seven of 11 here on their home court tonight. Okay, I said this earlier, but usually you have one or two players on your team that have ugly shots, okay? That all their kids have pretty shots. I don't know what they're doing, but all their shots are picture perfect, you know, good looking shots. Of course, when you make them, they even look better, don't they? Something in the water here in Kansas. I mean, look at that. She, you know, she, she kind of did a little goose, they call that a little bit of a gooseneck where she kind of pulled back too quick, but she had pretty good follow through. She's three for three from beyond the arc, so whatever yeah, I'm Ambrosio's a... doing, that's what you go ahead and mimic and show to your players. Well, you know, Collins at the line. You know, shooting's fundamentals, repetition, and concentration. You got to have the fundamental shot, you got to get the reps, and then you got to concentrate, and, and it seems like they feel quite at home here in the drum. And Collins able to come through. Before she takes a seat. Well, it's got to be a frustrating year so far for Coach Travis just because they over exceeded or how do you say they just did so well last year that no yeah, one they, no they, one expected it. They set a high bar last year to live up to and frankly, if that missing piece Alicia Froling was healthy and with them. This could be one of your top four teams in the American. Cash, one on one, will have it stripped away. Who touched the last is going to stay here with the Mustangs. Yeah, they, they did a great job, but he wants them to uh, regain their edge. And uh, it, that comes from an individual or individuals. And Adams certainly can do no more. I mean, she's trying to do everything for them. It's just getting every, all, every other piece of the puzzle going. And possession arrow favoring SMU this time. And it's emerging with the basketball, Diamond Lockhart, the Texan. One of, the, one of uh, Coach Travis Mays' non-negotiables is not, not working hard and you know not giving the energy. And I'm pretty sure he's going to go back with this film session and get them back to work because this isn't what he expects. We'll get the foul on the native of France, Alicia Fay, the freshman. Uh, she tried to reject the offering of Ariana Whitfield, a 64% free throw shooter at the line. Sometimes you have to take two steps forward and one step backwards and they took a lot of steps forward last year, but they're taking a little bit of a step backward. Um, if they would lose here tonight, going one and four in the league. And uh, that's not where they expected to be. So they're gonna have to dig themselves out of this hole and uh, make something happen. Well, again, they stay on the road and they go to a very talented UCF squad as well that also went deep into the WNIT last year. Also with then a first year head coach. 
Well, and that's a, that, that's one of the difficult places to play. There, you know, Coach Abe's not making UCF uh, 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 Orlando uh, Disney World. You know, when you go in there, you're going to have to, you know, play. You and I, along with our ADN crew, hop over to Orlando tomorrow and we'll stick around for that Saturday matchup as well to see the Mustangs again. Tomorrow it's Tulane and Coach Lisa Stockton taking her group on the road. Kobe Morgan continuing to close out her storied career as the hometown girl from New Orleans headlining the roster once again for the Green Wave. Well, one of the amazing players in the American, Colby Morgan. Love that kid. She's She can dial it up. She can take it off the ground. She can shoot the three. She can play both ends. That's what Coach talked about is, you know, most of the time the all-stars of the first teamers only want to play one end, and that's the offensive end, but she, she sacrifices herself on the defensive end. Pretty sure Morgan is the uh, standout for Tulane. If for no other reason, she's the only player on the roster not named Kayla, from what I recall. <laughs> that's the new requirement for Lisa Stockton when she goes recruiting. Shockers with a 22-point lead midway through here in the fourth quarter. And Ranger Bassard still banging down low with Deja Thomas. Thomas will pick up the whistle. Four different Shockers in double figures now as, again, Ambrosio with that last three-pointer of hers with 11 points overall for the game. Joined three of her teammates and now a travel by Ranji. Well, they're getting it inside where they want to. I think what Coach Adams is looking for is some high percentage shots. You know, taking their time, using the clock because it's their friend, and just coming out of here with a, a victory. The Shockers hang on and extend their winning streak to three. That will be tested this weekend against USF. What a matchup that could potentially be. Again, it'll be here in Wichita before the Shockers hit the road, take, taking on Memphis and ECU to close out the month. Yeah, I think look for that one to be a really good game. Certainly a measuring stick for just how hot the Shockers are right now. I don't think Coach Adams has sat down all night. She's passionate about her, her, her game. She's passionate. She wants all the people in Wichita to feel her passion, her team to feel her passion. She's excited. She wants to give the seniors a, a positive experience. And, uh, you know, that's a great design. Took UTEP to two NCAA tournaments, a couple of WNITs as well. You mentioned a Coach of the Year in Conference USA most recently two years ago. Adams leading the charge, four on two. Perry. Nice job, able to shake loose from Alicia Faye, the freshman. That's a transition buckle we haven't seen in a long time from either team, so. Well, what can SMU do here in the final five minutes to build towards their matchup this weekend? Well, getting a man-to-man -man in which I see that they are finally in, but it's almost... Uh, day late a dollar short here but I mean they need to get in a man to man I, I would be playing 54 full, full court defense what I call a full court defense uh, and and I just make I just make my players just give it everything they got for the last five minutes you know work for some transition get some quick hits I uh, think they, they need to shoot with 10 seconds or less I mean you know make something happen and they're still kind of taking a little, little time here in 18 points for Adams right at her season average and that phrase, go get it, as UCF this time going to get it was Diamond Lockhart. Well, when she put in the phrase, go get it, which she felt like they weren't going and getting it, they all of a sudden now got rebounds and, and uh, blocks. A 20-point lead for the Shockers, five minutes away from making it a three-game winning streak here in the American. I was the last person anybody's thinking is going to be in college athletics. One thing I really valued about my SMU experience was being in engineering school. I was taught how to think. In 2012, my wife and I decided to start our foundation. Basically the goal is to let kids be kids 
while they're in the hospital, but also be able to return to being a kid when they're done. A huge part of my quality of life is the experiences that I've had, and that was all provided by SMU. I'm Thomas Morstead. Game changers are shaped here. Wichita State University is Shocker Nation. We exceed expectations, push boundaries, seize opportunities, and move boldly ahead. We are student-centered and innovation-driven. It's who we are. Our vision is simple but powerful. Create, innovate, collaborate, and celebrate. With one unifying purpose, to shock the world. to see your team cut down the nets March 3rd to the 6th. Call the Mohegan Sun Arena or visit us online to purchase tickets today. Again, a full slate of women's basketball this year here in January and February. A reminder that coming up tomorrow over in Orlando again, all of about 50 degrees warmer than here in Wichita. It's the Green Wave and the Knights colliding. Coach Stockton, Coach Abe, two great ones. Match their squads here in mid-January. And then, of course, they'll be sticking around in Orlando. SMU comes to town on Saturday. In fact, we'll see the Mustangs host Cincinnati a little bit later on. Next time we see the Shockers, it'll be at East Carolina to say farewell to the month of January before we all of a sudden find ourselves just about a month away from all the March Madness here in college basketball. Look forward to all those upcoming contests here on the American Digital Network. Appreciate all the support of the folks in Providence and the conference office. And all the great job helping us out, keeping us informed on some storylines around the conference. And then, of course, all these coaches so generous with their time, really passionate about their student athletes. And that includes certainly Travis Mays and Keitha Adams. Well, I think Travis has just got to go back and have another little talk with every single player on this team and figure out, you know, what they see their value add. And then, you know, work on their quarter court offense a little bit more, getting some, you know, ball movement and playing a little bit better together as a team. John Asia Cash, uh, a good showing in her limited minutes. Yeah, I, I really think she, I like her. Every time she's in, she wants it. She's working hard. I, I, I think, you know, I might go with her even more. Ever heard of this number three, Mackenzie Adams? God love her. <laughs> I mean, really hard. 20, 21 soul. points for Adams. Yeah, I, I feel bad for her because uh, I mean, she can only do so much. And uh, she's trying to do everything she can, and but she can't do it all. Whitfield has seven. She's at her season average. Nobody else has more than four for SMU, and it's cash with the basketball once again. Well, Bassard with a, a, a little turnover there, and she's had a, a couple of those tonight. Perry. And help from Bassard. They'll get a foul on Ranji, and Perry will go to the free throw line. So an 18-point lead for Wichita State. Chance to cut it down to 16 here with the clock stopped. 4:01 to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I'm looking at the minutes here. You know, Cash has only gotten 15 minutes, um, one for one. She had four rebounds. She has three personal fouls. Maybe fouling a little bit too much for a youngster, but. I don't know. I feel like her energy and her athleticism, you know, she's a good she's a good go to free throws for SMU when we come back to Wichita. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit and a game winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. SMU trails by 20 here with 4.02 to go in the fourth quarter. Now, we've seen Wichita State with a five-minute drought right now in the midst of a four-minute field goal drought, but SMU just has not been able to capitalize 
on these opportunities. There is a Shocker squad. We mentioned a slow start in their first ever journey into the American, but now they're starting to find their identity, an identity that you talked about at the top of the broadcast. You've got junior college, you've got international players, you've got all sorts of a mixture of personnel with a first year head coach here in Wichita, Kansas, and yet it's all starting to gel. First year head coach, but you know, long, long time coach of women's basketball. And I think when you come from those junior college ranks, as we talked about, uh, you do know how to, you know, retool and refuel your, your team. And she's not scared of, you know, finding the roles and making it happen. Shockers are going to be jumping up into that sixth spot in the standings by the end of tonight. There is such parity right in the middle of this league, and you and I get to witness it a couple times each week here in the American, and uh, this has been a great league to follow since its inception, and of course the addition of Wichita State, something that had a lot of people excited, not just in women's basketball, but a variety of sports. They ran the table in volleyball this past fall, uh, a great athletic department as a whole. Well, as a coach, what you want your team to do is win your home games and steal a couple on the road. Well, they stole one at Tulane. You tell me Wichita beats Tulane on the road, I tell you not. And it happened, and it happened solidly. And I know uh, Tulane coach was disappointed in their play, but she also praised Wichita. So this this is going to be a tough team because they're well coached, and uh, you know they play both ends. That's a Tulane team that's played in the postseason at the NCAA tournament or the WNIT every year since 2010. Yeah, they're making a transition too because they lost their playmaker, and now they've got a young playmaker, which makes people press them and you know, make them insecure. And you, if, you, if you can shut Colby Morgan out, then, you know, you, you might have a chance. It's a big if. Yep. One more free throw here. Well, SMU needs to figure out how to play in a, a better tempo, you know. Uh, I don't know if I get somebody just to push that ball down the floor and run, run my lanes harder or, or something, but uh, it's just too calm of a tempo. Seventh rebound for Ranji Bassard a moment ago. They go into Ranji, finds an open teammate. Long two off the front iron. Cash with another rebound. That's five now for Cash off the bench. And Adams is going back to the free throw line where today she's five of six for five of her 20 points. Well, when the scouting would report on Adams would be when she gets it, you know, she's going to go. And uh, you better stop her because she, she's not passing it to anybody. She's going all the way. And she's so accustomed to being kind of a complimentary player for Alicia Froling, not this year. Well, it was a good inside-outside game they had going last year. Now the problem is they don't have an inside game. Uh, Thomas was their inside game last time, but right now, today, no one showed up inside. So now everything is on her shoulders. Deja Thomas has been limited to 0 for 2 shooting from the floor, four points all from the free throw line, and five rebounds. That's 17 fewer rebounds than we saw on Saturday. Both teams looking for a strong push here in the final three and a half minutes. Wichita State still again 0 for in the last four and a half minutes from the floor shooting. Yeah, clearly uh, Thomas is frustrated. Uh, she's trying to hold a very physical facade down low. And, uh, you know, if, it, with a player like that, you ha Thomas has to use her athleticism and stay off her body and get around her. Cash commits the foul. They'll count the bucket. A chance for a three-point play for Angie Tompkins. Well, Tompkins has been a nice, nice addition here. Five of six tonight, two of two from the line, three rebounds. I mean, very balanced scoring for the Shockers. She has 12 points, one of four Shockers in double figures tonight. And make it 13. She's tied for the team lead with Bassard. Adams unable to pour in the triple. Another offensive rebound this time, hauled in by Whitfield. Cash, and she takes advantage of Angie Tompkins trying to sell the offensive foul. Yeah, Cash, uh, Cash is the future right there. I think I'm gonna give her about 
30 minutes a game. I was told it was Bitcoin. <laughs> a nice move, but even better closing out by Ambrosio. She said, get it out of here, not in my house. I mentioned Thomas and Cash both playing with four personal fouls for SMU. Ambrosio with four of her own. Cash had the range, and that time perhaps a little too strong. And on the opposite end, there's a transition. How often do we see that last night between UConn and Texas? A poor shot from beyond the arc leading to an easy layup on the opposite end. Well, that's when you take that deep three without shifting anything. They got, they've got odds, and they're going to always beat you down the floor. Cash again. I'm not looking for another three. So I started bragging about her, and she <laughs> takes two threes. So. She's now one of ten in her career from downtown. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd be saying that you don't have the green light. You have the red light. Everybody wants to shoot the three ball. Well, I, got, I get green lights, red lights, and yellow lights on those threes. Yellow lights where you say no, and then it goes and, in, and you say yes? Yeah, yellow lights kind of, you know, they're not quite, you know percentage-wise where I want them to be, but on any given night, they could do it. Ranger Bassard, 15 points, matches Tompkins tied for the team high. Three shy of her season average. Bassard kind of just kind of waits till that fourth quarter a lot, and she just starts pouring them in. While everybody gets tired, she just starts getting her adrenaline. I was going to say, how much of that is conditioning? I, she's in great condition. That, that whole team is. I'm not saying SMU's not. I, I think SMU doesn't is not as physical as Wichita, so they don't really like that physical play like UCF does and U, USF and Connecticut. I mean, you got this is a physical conference. You're going to have to take that. See the numbers? Rebound shy of a double double today. Talking to her head coach Keitha Adams. This is when she's you know pumping her up a little bit talking casually about what they're going to eat in the locker room after the game. First missed free throw for Tompkins today, three for four now. Still looking for her 16th point, which would give her the team lead. And Keith Adams dipping into the bench is going to pull some starters. And they get an ovation here at Coke Arena. We'll try to catch up with Ranji Bassard before we sign off tonight. Well, I think Boatwright, the AD at Wichita, has to be thrilled with what he's seeing early on by the Wichita State women's basketball team. Going in this kind of conference with as difficult it is, making a transition with a new coach, pretty much saying, hey, I just want you to be positive and this and that, and oh, well, you, you're winning too already? Okay. I mean, that's, that's great. Fanny Hawkinson from Sweden's, the freshman number 12, in the ball game for the first time today. Andra Stovall, a senior out of Arlington, Texas, in the ball game as well now for Wichita State. Looking for Lazada Cabbage inside, matched up with Bradshaw, and again, Sabrina Lazada Cabbage has been a solid player, and that time adds two more to her tally tonight. She's got eight. She likes that little step back fade where she catches it with two feet, steps back on that right foot, and shoots the fade. And the debut tonight for Savannah Ellis out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. One of the Ellis sisters who joined the Mustangs this year. Her sister, Mackenzie, a couple years older, transferring from Colorado, has to sit out this year for Travis Mays. Is out of cabbage, that one won't fall. And the rebound winds up with Smith. Whitfield got fired up early. She's been kind of quiet. The whole second half, I think she picked up seven in the first half and hasn't scored. So Wichita State will pick up the 23-point victory after starting 0-3 in the American. They've now won their last three. That will move them to the middle of the pack in the American. Continuing momentum, hosting USF this upcoming weekend. They topple SMU tonight. We talk to the victorious Shockers when we come back here on ADA.
7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 21 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle. A big save. A clutch hit. And a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. Power is respecting an opponent, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power. 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 Power for life. For a third straight game, Wichita State victorious. Keith Adams has found something that's starting to click here midway in January. So 66 to 43, Wichita State improves to 8 and 12 overall. Ranji Bassard, that won't count as a rebound, but we're going to have a chance to catch up with her victorious head coach, Keith Adams, who's now with Iggy Garcia. Iggy? Hi, Coach Adams is here with me. She was celebrating a little bit here with her friends. Tell me a little bit about the domination of this game. Tell me a little bit about uh, how, how you feel about it overall. Well, I tell you what, I think our team, we've kind of found our identity. Uh, we know we have to be great at rebounding and going and getting loose balls, and we just have to play hard. Uh, you know, when we play hard, good things happen, and uh, really proud of the ladies. Rangie was actually sick, and she just gutted it out and uh, had a good game, and it was kind of ugly, but I'll tell you what, uh, we'll take it, and I think we're getting better, and we're just going to keep working hard. Great win against a good team. As a matter of fact, three wins in a row now. How do you keep that streak going? Well, we just every day we step on the floor. we got to have a lot of passion, and uh, we got to bring a lot of energy, and we got to go get it. Thank you. All right, thank you. We got Ranger Broussard coming up here. Yeah, now's the time to be playing some of your best basketball. As uh, Wichita State, we've noted, has top 25 USF no player, I guess. this weekend. And uh, Angela Beck, uh, that should be a good one. Well, I'm, I'm really excited for that one because the way Wichita's playing right now, that's going to be a, a real good game. So ultimately, four players finish in double figures. Tompkins will have the team high 16 points, 15 from Bassard. A rebound shy of a double-double for Wichita State. 22 points from Mackenzie Adams in the losing effort for SMU as the Mustangs one and four now in conference again. Next up, they head out to UCF. We will see that matchup on Saturday, but first we remind you, Angela Beck, Iggy Garcia, I'm Lincoln Rose. Join us in our ADN crew tomorrow night Tulane at UCF. That one will be at 6 Central, 7 Eastern, right here on ADN. Tonight from the Roundhouse, Wichita State victorious over the Mustangs, 66 to 43.